Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about the double and the float data types in Java. Here is our outline. We will talk about floating point numbers. Then we will talk about the double data type and finally the float data type. Let's get started. So what is a floating point number? It is a number that have a decimal part, all right? And we have already seen some examples, right? So all these numbers are floating point numbers. Even if we have point zero, this is considered a floating point number. So now let's talk about the double data type in Java. So it is a type used with the floating point numbers. So let's declare a double variable. We will do something like this. The type is double and we are calling the variable number, all right? So let's see the range of a double variable. All the numbers inside this interval can be stored in a double variable. And as you can see, this is a very huge number, right? And what's important is that there is a decimal point. So previously, we were not able to store numbers with a decimal point because all the types that we learned are types that are used with integers. So if you try to put a number with a decimal point inside a variable of type int, for example, you will get an error. Now let's see the smallest positive non-zero number that can be stored in a double variable. It is this one over here. So it is 4.9 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 324. So this is a very, very small number, all right? So a double variable is very precise. And finally, a double takes eight bytes in the memory. Now let's talk about the float data type. It is also a type used with floating point numbers. So let's declare a variable of type float. We will do the same thing and we're going to use the float data type. Now let's have a look at the range of values. So the numbers in this interval can be stored in a float variable. And as you can see, I'm using the letter F over here. So every floating point number in Java is considered a double. And to tell Java that it is a float, we should use the letter F, okay? Now let's have a look at the smallest positive non-zero number that can be stored inside a float variable. It is this one over here. 1.4 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 45. So this number over here is smaller than the number that we can store in a double, right? So a double is more precise than a float. So if you are developing an application, where you need very precise floating point numbers, then you will use a double instead of a float, all right? And finally, a float takes four bytes in the memory. So I'm still in the same project, and let's start by initializing a float and a double variable. So let's start with a float. We're going to use the float keyword, and let's call it F1, for example. And let's assign it to 4.5, for example. Now, as you can see, we have an error. This error says that the required is a float, and it found a double. So as we said, Java considers all floating point numbers doubles. And over here, we are trying to store a double inside a float. And the Java have a problem with this. Because as you know, a double can store more than a float. All right? So over here, we're going to tell Java that this is a float by using the letter F. All right? Now, as you can see, the problem is solved. Now, let's print F1. So S out F1. Run the program. And here is our output. We can see 4.5 printed. Now let's create a double variable. So let's say double d1 is equal to 10.6, for example. So as you can see, we have no problem. And let's print d1. So print ln d1 like this. Run the program. And as you can see, this is our output. Now over here, I'm going to use the letter f. So as you can see, we don't have a problem. We are storing a float inside a double. And since a double can store more than a float, Java have no problem. And it stores the float inside this double, OK? What actually happens is that this float will be converted to a double and then it will be stored inside D1. Just like when we store an integer inside a long. The integer will be converted to a long and then it will be stored inside the long variable. And we will talk about this later in details. Now let me remove this f from over here. And now let's try to use an integer. So I'm going to put int. So as you can see, immediately we have an error. This error says the required is an integer and we found a double. So we are trying to store a double inside an integer, and this is not possible. Also, if you try to store a float, we will have the same error. So the required type is an integer, but we found a float. So this is also not possible, all right? So let me remove this statement, and also remove this one. And now, let's try to store an integer inside a float. Let's put four, for example. So as you know, every integer can be a floating point number, because simply, 4 can be written as 4.0. So Java will see that we are storing an integer inside a float. And this is possible because simply we will add 0.0. So 4 will be converted to 4.0 as a float and then it will be stored inside F1, right? Now suppose that we have a double over here. So let's say double F1 is equal to 4. So we are trying to store an integer inside a double. 
So 4 will be converted to 4.0 as a double and then it will be stored inside of 1, alright? So you can imagine that the double data type is more powerful than the integer data type. So we can store the integer inside the double. Another example, the long data type is more powerful than the int data type. So we can store an integer inside a long, right? And finally, of course, we can do some arithmetic operations. So we can say f1 minus 2.5, for example, run the program. And as you see, we have 1.5. So 4.0 minus 2.5 is equal to 1.5, right? So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.